What's going on guys? It's Ben from JK Gear Gadgets. And today's video is going to be about how to replace a Jeep JK rear axle shaft. Um, so, uh, I got a bent flange on uh, on my uh, passenger rear. And uh, I'm going to replace it with this 10 factory chromoly shafts. I'm at Iva Rubicon. Uh, so it's 32 spline at the end. And uh, one side is longer than the other. So the sport models are going to be, uh, so sport and Sahara are going to be 30 spline and equal length. So that's an easy way to identify. Um, so uh, let's go step by step on how to do this. Uh, hopefully you buy, you bought the shafts that already had everything pressed in. Uh, if the studs weren't pressed in, you can either hammer those in or use a ball joint kit and press them in with an impact gun or press, uh, whatever. There's many different ways of doing that. So let's go ahead and take the tire off and uh, get started. Okay, guys, so now that we got the uh, tire and wheel off, our next job is to take the brake caliper off, which is a uh, 18 millimeter uh, bolt right there. There's one here and one down there. Uh, you probably have to use a wrench because of socket. I was gonna hit your sway bar link on the lower and upper side. So uh, yeah, we're gonna take those two off. Uh, they should be pretty tight. But let's go ahead and get both those off. All right, now that we got the brake caliper off, we're gonna set it on something so there's no tension on the line. Um, now that we've done that, we are gonna unplug our ABS uh, wheel speed sensor. So we're gonna pull that red clip out and then pinch on the back just like any other plug and pull it out, simple as that. Uh, then there's a bolt, it's kinda hard to see, on that sensor. Um, Right there, uh, eight millimeter or five sixteenths. Uh, I can't remember which one fits, but uh, I want to say eight millimeter. We're gonna take that off and uh, just back it out a little bit. After we do that, we are going to uh, take the rotor off. Uh, if your e-brake set, go ahead and make sure your front wheels are uh, chalked and uh, hit this off. Right now, the e-brake is expanded, and holding this on. So uh, let's uh, make sure the Jeep's in gear and take the e-brake off and get this rotor off. Real quick, this uh, ABS sensor, I uh, use a 5 16 uh, wrench or socket to get it off. The 8 millimeter had some slop in it. Uh, so now that we got this off, go ahead and set that aside somewhere we're not going to lose it. And we're going to take out the axle shaft. Uh, there's four retaining, uh, where the retainer plate uh, goes to the axle, there's four bolts, or four nuts we're going to take off, and they're 18 millimeter. Um, I found that in a lot of cases uh, ratcheting wrench is going to be your best bet once you break them loose or you can try to get a, uh, a ratchet in there I'm sure if you take off your sway bar link it's going to give you more room but I'm just going to go ahead and do it with a, uh, a wrench but yep 18 millimeter pop all four of those off if for some reason you notice that you're turning this and the stud is turning too it means that in there kind of hard to see those uh, studs are pressed in um, if it's spinning too, your only bet really is to get a welder and weld the stud to the backing plate. So uh, I've had that happen before, it sucks, but that's about your only option. So uh, hopefully that doesn't happen to you or me right now. All right, I'm gonna take all these four off. All right, the four backing plate bolts are out. Uh, now is when we're gonna uh, pretty much take the sensor out. Let's pull it out. Um, you can see in there where it, uh, has the air gap for the tone rings right there. Uh, we're just gonna pull it out making sure it's not hitting anything. And uh, it almost doesn't even have to come all the way out. Uh, just right there until you can see that it's clear in there. I know in the video it's really hard to see. The lighting's not so good. There we go. But uh, in person you'll be able to see if it clears this plate, the silver retainer plate. So now that everything's off, the sensor's off, we are gonna pull this out. Um, but before I do that, I want to mention something. Uh, I am replacing my shafts with 10 Factory, and as you can tell, I have 10 Factory in here. Um, you know, I want to say they, they have a great warranty. Uh, they warranty these shafts. I have a bent flange, and what that means is that this uh, this flange isn't true. Um, it wobbles now. Uh, they are great shafts. I put my Jeep through a lot of stuff. I uh, really beat on it. So I know you guys don't see any videos of it, but usually when I wheel, I don't have anybody to video me. Um, but I'd like to give a shout out to 10 Factory for warranting the shafts. Uh, it's not their fault. It's a semi-float axle. You know, uh, it's one of the drawbacks of a semi-float. Uh, full float, you know, you don't have all the stress on the 
on the shaft itself, it's on the housing. So uh, if you're not familiar with full float versus semi float axles, there's a lot of videos out there. I'm not going to go into detail now, but uh, having uh, bent flanges is uh, problematic with a semi float axle. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. Uh, it should only take a couple whacks with a mallet. Uh, if you do have trouble, grab your, uh, your rotor, put it on backwards, and uh, screw a few lug nuts on, three or four, and then uh, you can really beat it with a mallet that way, or use a slide hammer, uh, either one. I usually use the brake rotor on there. So if I can't get this out, I'll throw the brake rotor on, but uh, hopefully this will slide right out. Uh, be careful. There is gonna be a gear oil that's gonna come out, uh, so have something to catch it, or do like I did and jack this side up higher than the other so the gear oil's running that way. Man, my phone's doing something crazy with the lighting here. All right, so uh, yeah, pull this out. So as you can tell, I had to use the brake rotor <laughs> to hit it. I only took a few hits after that. But yeah, you put it in backwards and put a few lug nuts on and you can really get a, uh, some good swings with a rubber mallet. Uh, don't hit this with a steel uh, mallet or anything. You don't want to, unless you don't plan on reusing the rotors. So uh, yeah, now this is out. I'm going to take it out and remove the bearing race from inside the axle. I'll show that here in a minute. But uh, yeah, let me go ahead and take the axle out and uh, clean up all the uh, gear oil. All right, so here's inside the axle tube. You want to make sure that you remove the bearing race. Um, it is okay if this is hand tight. Uh, most of the time it is on uh, JKs. But if for some reason it's not, uh, you're going to want to be... Oh, mine got it out. <laughs> I was kind of hoping it was going to be stuck. Um, but if you can just pull it out hand tight by working the corners and just slowly pulling out a little bit at a time. Uh, if it's not in there hand tight and it's uh, frozen, you're gonna wanna get a bearing puller or something uh, that can catch on this lip and you can uh, pull it out without, uh, without scratching the inside here of your axle housing. Uh, you want that to be a nice smooth uh, finish. If it is scratched, when you're done pulling this off, get some emery cloth. Um, and uh, polish it up nice and smooth. So we're gonna remove this and uh, start to install the axle shaft. All right, so grab the new shaft, make sure they're equal length for you Rubicon guys. You don't wanna grab the short end. And what we're gonna do is simply slide it in and uh, make sure the splines light up inside the carrier. Uh, you don't wanna damage the splines on these while putting it in, so guide it in careful. Uh, another tip real quick is if the bearing race which right now is on there uh, that's what was inside the housing if that's really loose uh, you can always take it off the axle shaft first put it inside there and then install your axle shaft um, I'm probably gonna do that because I like to make sure that the make sure it's in there all the way and I'm not trying to uh, press it in with the torque of the backing plate so I'm gonna take the uh, the race off and put it inside the housing. Slid it in. I know I said I was going to put the uh, the race in there first, but the bearing was so tight on the shaft, I couldn't even get the race off. So I figured I'm not even going to worry about it. Uh, I got it lined up. Re retainer plate holes are lined up, and uh, I'm just going to push her in. Um, and if once she's in by hand, just give her a few light, light taps with the mallet, uh, just evenly around each corner. Make sure the bearing goes in nice and smooth. Also, watch for your sensor if you didn't fully remove it. So, I'm going to put this in and start the nuts on the retainer plate. Look up torque, spe yeah, torque specs for those nuts and then for the caliper bolts. And then after that, video's over, man. You can fig figure out the rest. All right, so back with the torque specs. 45 foot-pounds for the four retaining bolts and for the brake caliper, 55. Um, Make sure that when you're using uh, the 55 foot-pounds that you're using uh, some Loctite on that because that's those bolts like to come loose. Uh, so blue Loctite and it wouldn't hurt to put it on there. Um, but yeah, that's it. You've changed out your rear shafts. Um, a few things I would like to mention before the video is over. When you're tightening these four bolts down, uh, don't suck one in all the way then move to the other. Uh, because you're going to be pushing that in even uh, une unevenly. So uh, tighten you know, one until you start to get a little bit tight, move over to the opposite corner, the bottom front, 
get that one, uh, then move over in the star pattern until they're all torqued down. Um, don't, don't, don't forget to top off a little bit of fluid if you lost, lost any. Uh, now would be a great time to change your rotor and pads, uh, especially if you have a bent flange because your uh, brake rotor is going to develop that wave to it as well. So I'm going to change out my rotor, my pads, top off fluid, torque all this down, and we are done with today's project. Perfectly as the uh, sun is setting tomorrow, I'm going to go knock out the other side. But uh, yeah, pretty easy to do. Um, you could do it at home in your driveway. Doesn't require much tools. And once you've done it once, you're pretty much a pro. So, and uh, yeah, I got a lot of projects coming up. Uh, not much that are video worthy. Need to replace this shock. As you can tell, it has a nice curvature in it from uh, backing up into a nice little rock up at Roush Creek. So, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, subscribe, throw a like down, throw a comment. And check out my other videos. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to get a get up to a thousand followers by the end of the year, but we'll see. That's probably not going to happen. Um, so take care, guys, and be safe out there.